Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try to discuss those topics with the help of different questions. So for all those who are there for the very first time on our channel, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon so that you can get all the latest updates for our upcoming videos. You can also join our telegram group. In this very group, we share some free quizzes as well as the updates for all our latest videos. So moving on to question number one, it says the country's foreign exchange reserves crossed the 600 billion US dollar mark for the first time. Which of the following is the major contributor to this rise? So let's first discuss about forex reserves. What are different contributors of these reserves and which of those contributors or which of those reserves has actually led to the rise in this very uh, uh, rise in the forex reserve to this very extent. So if I talk about India's forex reserve recently as per the latest weekly statement or the weekly uh, statistical statement which RBI released, we got to know that its foreign exchange reserves have crossed the 600 billion mark. Okay, they surged to a record high of 600 point, 605 point some billion US dollars and the major contributor to this rise was the rise in the foreign currency assets. So if I talk about the, uh, the total reserves, the reserves comprise of the foreign currency assets, of gold, of SDRs and of reserve position. So out of this, you can see that this much around more than six billion, 605 billion dollars has been our reserve as of now. And the major contributor, contributing more than around 90% was the foreign currency assets. The gold, the share of gold, SDRs, reserve position was very less vis-a-vis -vis our foreign currency assets. So let us have a look at what are these forex reserves and what different components comprises of these reserves. So if I talk about the forex reserves or the foreign exchange reserves, then they are the reserve assets which are held by any monetary authority. If I talk about India, our monetary authority is the central bank, the RBI. So it maintains certain external assets in the form of reserves. Those are known as forex reserves. Now, an example of this reserve could be gold. So RBI maintains some gold with it. Now, why is there a need to maintain the foreign exchange reserves? See, at you, uh, in, in, if you see uh, a simple example of yourself, in order to be protected against the situation like that of a pandemic, we are keeping more of cash in hand with us so that if in, in the future some problem comes up, we have enough cash available. Similarly, people were uh, stocking up the rations because of the COVID. They thought that they won't be able to get that because there were lockdowns imposed. So you are keeping reserves in order to make sure that at times of need, you can utilize them. So does RBI do. What RBI does, it also keeps some reserves. It keeps those reserves in the form of gold, in the form of SDRs, in the form of foreign currency, so that it can help at times of fiscal deficit, at times of need, when uh, the situation is not that very good. So to absorb the shocks, you can utilize those forex reserves. You can also use them to maintain your exchange rates. Okay, you have more dollars and their prices, say, are rising or falling so you accordingly buy or sell the dollars and the rupees in order to maintain the proper exchange rates okay you as a central bank intervene so you can use the forex reserves to manage the monetary policy and the exchange rates and you can also use it to support your own national currency so what are different types of reserves which rbi maintains one is gold, as I said, okay, you have enough gold available so that at times of need, you can sell that gold and utilize the money you have. Then we have the foreign currency assets. Whatever foreign currency you are holding, you are holding some dollars, some euros, some pounds. So all those are examples of your foreign currency assets. Now someone is investing in your country, FDI is coming to your country, FPI is coming to your country. So different capital inflows are coming to your country, you are borrowing internationally. So when the money comes in, it, say it comes from US, then it comes in the form of dollars. It comes from other country, it, may, it might come in the form of euros, pound, yen and so on. 
so if dollars is coming okay now if they want to invest they need rupees to invest in india so they will give dollars to rbi and rbi will in return give them the rupees so what is this uh, because of which what is happening because of this rbi is building on its uh, dollar reserves or other currency reserves so these are the foreign currency assets rbi can sell that dollar at the time of need in order to meet its different objectives so they are your foreign currency assets then we have sdrs now sdr stands for special drawing right in order to register with imf as a member nation you need to pay certain subscription fee like if we want to register with some club with some gym we pay some subscription fee so the countries need to pay the subscription fee to imf so imf decides your quota that how much you should pay based on the uh, your economic scenario how is the stability in your nation what is your gdp and certain other factors so based on that imf decides your quota and you need to make the payment of that and you make that payment by buying the special drawing rights they are not currencies they are reserve assets which are created by imf you can say that it's like a artificial currency okay ye ek artificial currency hai and its value is determined based on the basket of goods so uh, alag alag kar ba, based on the basket of currencies so alag alag currency jo bhi important currencies hai like we have dollar yen pound okay aise kuch currencies ka average nikal ke based on the average of certain currencies using that basket of currencies you determine the value of sdr so you can say it's a artificial currency but it's not exactly a currency it's a reserve asset of I- imf so you have to subscribe with imf and you can do so by buying the sdrs so you can make the payment of sdrs in dollars in rupees or through sdrs itself so that is the concept of sdrs now if you are buying some sdrs imf will give you a voting right so you as a member country will get the voting right as a benefit other than that in case of emergency if you need loans then imf will grant you those loans so how much loans can be granted to you from imf is your reserve position with imf so based on certain percentage of the amount you paid to buy those sdr in the form of dollars and some sdrs is called the reserve position the reserve assets which contributed majorly to our reserve was the foreign currency asset that is to our question which is the major contributor answer is option a foreign currency assets Moving on to question number two, the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision has proposed new requirements for banks that want to hold cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. The panel proposed that 12-50 percent risk weight be applied to a bank's exposure to Bitcoin and certain other cryptocurrencies. How much capital must be held by banks against these cryptocurrencies? So let us have a look at this very recommendation. Basel committee has not decided as of now it has just proposed so it's a proposal okay note it that it's a proposal not a decision as of now taken so basel committee which basically provides the basel standard the basel norms it has proposed some requirements for the banks that they should maintain some capital they should set aside some capital if they want to hold bitcoins so if banks are dealing in bitcoins okay it's in that very case in order to provide a cushion against that they should set aside some capital we have seen under basel norms also that banks need to keep enough capital okay we there are different requirements under basel the capital adequacy ratio needs to be maintained counter cyclical buffer is there capital uh, conservation buffer is there so you need to maintain some capital so that at times of stressful situations you can utilize them similarly now the banks if they want to hold crypto cryptocurrencies then in order to hold that they should also set aside some capital to basically uh, as a basic, we can say that we need to hold some capital to provide a cushion against the volatility or against the situation where your financial stability can be hampered aapko agar as a bank cryptocurrency hold karni hai to aapko uske against kuch capital bhi rakhni padegi set aside karke taki agar in case koi future mein problem aaye bahut zyada cryptocurrency mein volatility aaye koi uh, 
इमरजेंसी टाइप की सिचुएशन आए तो आप उस कैपिटल जो आपने सेट सेटिसाइड की है उसको यूटिलाइज कर सको सो बेजल कमेटी हैज गिवन दिस वेरी प्रपोजल दैट अ न्यू रिक्वायरमेंट विल बी देयर फॉर बैंक्स वेयर दे नीड टू होल्ड सम कैपिटल सो द रिस्क वेट व्हिच हैज बीन असाइंड फॉर दीज क्रिप्टो करेंसीज इज 1250% एंड हाउ मच कैपिटल यू नीड टू मेंटेन एज मच एज क्रिप्टोस यू आर होल्डिंग सेम अमाउंट ऑफ कैपिटल यू नीड टू मेंटेन based on 8% minimum capital requirement so i'll give you an example for it suppose you want to you as a bank wants to hold 100 dollar worth of bitcoin okay then assigning a 1250% weight to it 1250% of 100 is 1250 now against this 1250 you need to maintain 8% capital so 8% of this amount is 100 so this is the capital which you needs to maintain maintain iska matlab hai ki jitna aap bitcoin kharidoge utna hi aapko capital maintain karke rakhna padega 100 dollar ka kharid rahe ho to 100 dollar ka bitcoin capital maintain karke rakho if you are holding bitcoins worth rupees 200 dollars then same amount that is 200 dollars worth of capital you as a bank needs to maintain now why has basel recommended this why has it proposed so the reason is that cryptos are really very volatile okay we we have seen that they were uh, on um, they were basically rising they were booming cryptocurrency markets and they were at their at their peak but after elon musk's tweet they fell then after uh, china imposed a ban they further fell so this shows the level of volatility with respect to these cryptocurrencies this is one of the reason but not the only reason the other reason is that cryptos can also be used for illegal purposes for money laundering and other such cases so we need some protection against that taki bank ko ko problem na ho bank ko ko uske against enough capital maintain kar rakhni chahiye then we have there are threats with respect to our financial stability because this market is very very volatile so there can be swings in the prices and it could lead to defaults for the banks and banks are really very important institutions for our economy so if they will suffer a default the repercussions will be really very devastating so we need to make sure that banks maintain some capital against cryptos otherwise their finance the financial stability will be harmed and there will be increased risks for these banks so the capital which they have to maintain as per this basel proposal will be sufficient to absorb the full write off of the crypto asset exposures jo bhi crypto asset se aap exposed ho uski wajah se aapko jo bhi nuksan ho sakta hai uske against aap pehle hi buffer maintain karke chalo taki banks ko baad mein jaake problem na ho wo risk unki protect ho jaye so you can write off the crypto asset exposures without exposing your depositors the credit of so creditors of the banks to a loss banks have deposits of we the people okay so if banks will suffer a loss obviously we will also suffer our deposit there may might be situations like that of bank run so if banks are maintaining capital against the cryptos if due to the volatile market the value fails and the banks have to face a loss they have the capital in hand before only to compensate for that and the after effects will not ultimately reach the depositors so because of this this basel requirement has been specified it's just a proposal as i told you nothing has been fast, uh, finalized as of now and there is no timeline also specified it's just open for public comments and it might take years to actually come into picture okay so this was the uh, uh, proposal so the answer to this question is option b a bank may be held to hold a dollar in capital for each dollar worth of bitcoin based on 8% minimum capital requirement moving on to next question RBI has reviewed the ATM related charges to compensate the banks for higher interchange fee increasing cost of ATM deployment and expenses towards ATM maintenance which of the following statements correctly states these revised charges so if i talk about this RBI has recently reviewed the ATM related charges so in 2019 a committee was formulated and it was under the chairmanship of i BAs that is Indian Banks Association's chief executive 
why was this committee formulated in order to have discussions with respect to what should be the charges what should be the fees related to atms so that very committee had made certain recommendations to rbi rbi has not as it is implemented those uh, those recommendations it has made certain changes and according to uh, the needs which rbi felt uh, whatever recommendations were important accordingly they have taken a decision and have reviewed the atm related charges be implemented soon so if i talk about this first of all rbi has agreed to increase the interchange fee for transaction suppose you are a you are having a card of sbi okay a atm card of sbi and you want to withdraw some money so instead of going to an sbi's atm suppose you go to icici bank's atm to withdraw that money now your card was that of sbi you have a bank account at sbi but you are using the services of icici bank's atm or the icici bank so why will it provide that service for free obviously icic bank will charge something so it will charge that amount from sbi sbi will pay some amount to icici because icici is rendering the service to its customers so that fee is the interchange fee which is the income interchange income for icici so here the fee with respect to financial transactions was earlier rupees 15 so rbi has now decided that it will be increased to rupees 17 and if i talk about non financial transactions then earlier it was rupees 5 and now it has been increased to rupees 6 so if i talk about financial or non financial transactions like if we go to a atm to withdraw cash that's a financial transaction but other than withdrawing cash we also perform some other we also get some other services like we can change our pin we can get the mini statements so all those are the non financial transactions so both the amounts have been or the both the uh, amounts fee has now been increased now if i talk about the free services from atms free number of transactions then if you are going to a atm of your own bank then you get five free transactions including financial or non financial so if you are a sbi customer going to an sbi bank's atm then you will be able to access five free transactions which will comprise of both your financial or non financial transactions so if you are going to sbi you are withdrawing money you are make uh, you are withdrawing money you are getting the statement you are changing the pin five times you are doing the transaction then you will be not charged any amount for that okay but if i talk about uh, getting those services from other banks atm like a sbi customer going to an icici bank atm so in metro cities in, in non metro cities you have five free transactions they in other banks atm as well but in metro cities the limit is 3 so if you are say in a metro city like delhi or mumbai then if being a sbi customer you are going to icici banks atm then there are only 3 free transaction are allowed after that you will be charged now talking about how much amount will be charged for the number of transactions we are doing after you cross this free limit the maximum cap you will be charged rupees 20 per transaction this was the old provision as per new provision you will now be you can now be charging rupees 21 per transaction from a customer so it's up to bank they want to accept that or not obviously they are, they can accept because or they will accept because they will get more amount so this is the new charge which has been applied so we as a customer will now have to pay 21 per transaction but it has not yet been implemented it will come into effect from jan 2022 and if i talk about this interchange fee thing this will be effective from 1st august so from 1st august only a bank like sbi can charge rupees 17 for financial transactions from icici or this was just an example it applies to all other banks as well and that from the customer the increase fee will be charged from jan onwards all right so this is the change which has been made now talking about why these rates have been revised now the last when this rate was revised was in 2012 when in, when i talk about the interchange fee and the fee which is charged from customers was last revised in 2014 so after that various changes have happened the inflation is there then the maintenance charge for atm have risen you need to pay a lot to the atm guards for the maintenance of atms so electricity charges and all other things so atm maintenance have it has become expensive it is more expensive more costlier to have the atm set up okay 
and because the interchange fee has also been increased so it's important that to compensate the banks some increased amount is charged from the customers as well now this 1 rupee change might seem very small for you but if you see the amount of transactions which are happening the number of customers which the bank have this will accumulate to huge amount okay ek rupee dekhne mein chota lag raha hai lekin itne sare logo se jab wo ek rupee charge kiya jayega aur एक रुपए एक्स्ट्रा होने मिलेगा बैंक को और हर ट्रांजैक्शन पे मिलेगा तो कितना सारा अमाउंट बैंक एक्यूमुलेट कर लेगा नाउ इट विल आल्सो इंश्योर मोर पेनिट्रेशन ऑफ एटीएम्स एटीएम डिप्लॉयर्स विल गेट मोर अमाउंट सो दे 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 विल लाइकली बी मोटिवेटेड टू सेट अप मोर ए सो इट्स लाइकली टू गिव राइज टू मोर ए then it will incentivize the banks as well as white label atm deployers to set more cash dispensers aur isse kisko fayda hone wala hai isse bahut zyada fayda rural bank rural areas aur unbanked regions mein hone wala hai if more atms will be set up by banks or by white label atms i'll tell you who are white label atm deployers so when more atms are set and they are set up in the rural areas in the bank unbanked regions then it is going to help a lot of population over there okay people in the rural areas or unbanked regions are not able to get the access to atm services so when these deployers in order to get this higher interchange fee and higher fee from customers benefit they will banks will set more atms agar zyada atms honge if more atms will be set obviously it will benefit the people where the atms are actually being set up these are the reasons why rbi has taken this decisions okay so if i move back to the question here we have to identify the correct charges so increased interchange fee from 15 to 17 but it's not for non financial it's for financial so this statement is incorrect increased fee for financial this is not for financial this is for non financial so they have done here these statements are opposite so this is again incorrect yahan pe financial hona chahiye tha yahan pe non financial then the third one is again incorrect because the new limit is 25 or the new prescribed amount is 25 so none of the above statement is correct answer is option e now as i have told you that i'll discuss about white label atm so next question is with respect to that only the interchange income i have just discussed to an example that uh, sbi atm if sbi bank's card if you are using and you are going to icici's atm then icici will have to pay some fee to us uh, sorry sbi will have to pay some fee to icici icici will not render the services for free right so that fee is the interchange fee for sbi and it's the interchange income for icici here the bank which issues the card is the issuer bank and one where you are accessing that services is the acquirer bank okay the bank whose services you are using whose atm you are using to withdraw cash all right now moving on to white label atm so the question was that atm set up owned and operated by non banks are called dash so the answer is white label atm so from here it's clear that the atms which are not maintained by banks but by other companies are called वाइट लेबल ए टी एम्स सो इन्हें बैंक नहीं मेंटेन करता ऑपरेट करता ओन करता कोई और कंपनी इसे ओन करती है सो इफ एस बी आई बैंक इज सेटिंग अप इट्स ओन ए टी एम दैट्स नॉट अ वाइट लेबल ए टी एम बट इफ देर इज सम कंपनी से रिलायंस स्टार्ट सेटिंग अप इट्स ए टी एम देन दैट विल बी अ वाइट लेबल ए टी एम सो हेयर आर क्यू एग्जाम्पल्स टाटा ग्रुप सेट्स अप दी वाइट लेबल ए टी एम्स इंडी कैश नाम से इनकी ए टी एम्स होते हैं you can go uh, you can just search for an indicash atm and you will get to know okay tata maintains that atm so you will have the there the label uh, on, on the atm's board will be that of the company only okay like tata it has the indicash named atm other than that bti payments hitachi payments bank renji limited these are some companies which are providing the white label atm so the very difference is that the atms maintained by non banks are white label atms all right so this was all for today's session i hope the session was useful for you with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much